function, again, the same question stands, whether this function is differentiable at the origin. Uh, again, it's a continuous function, so we cannot use this tool from my main set of slides, continuous so using this, we can't say just it's, it's discontinuous, that's why it's not differentiable. It is continuous function, it's elementary function, that's why it is continuous. So we need to compute partial derivatives. This time, I'll do it in the express way, partial derivatives, compare this with the way I did before, look at this. I'm gonna say this, if I take the function with vanishing y, you just vanish y across this function, that will be just x cubed sorry, x cubed and then cubic root, which is just x. And the derivative of this x function, which is a partial derivative with respect to the x, is one. Yeah. How about that? Easy way to argue partial derivative for the zero point. Identical, similar argument for the second arg for the second variable, if I vanish x now in my function, the function ends up just x. And so the partial derivative with respect to the y, which is the derivative of this function, is one again. So we know my partial derivatives. We have a candidate for the L matrix. It's a Jacobian matrix. It's a matrix one, one. So that's my candidate for the L matrix when I start testing the definition of differentiability. And now I start testing definition of differentiability with this L matrix. So here's the definition spelled out. Again, I just copy the same line. It's just a copy of the definition. We have to test this limit. Again, x is a vector of components. Norm of x, it's, it's this expression. Now I substitute. f of 0 is 0, so this term disappears. This term will be this expression. Here, now we will have something, something non-zero, right? Because my L11, my x, both ways x vector is this one. So here, what will be here? How do we multiply matrices? What's going to be here? X plus, y. x plus y, that's right. So that's what we're testing now in the numerical terms. Another limit to test. See how many limits we need to test for, the, for, the, for direct verification of differentiability. The skills we were practicing last week, now they come handy. Well, for this one, again, horizontal and bisectoral approach will, will give two different values. That's something which I try every time before I even start thinking about the limit. Look at this. If I try horizontal approach, so again, I'll, I'll make this abbreviation. I call this function gxy just to make my exposition shorter, to avoid copy this all the time. So I try horizontal approach, and this time I even, I even skip this sequence one on n, I just say it like that, gx0. That's a horizontal approach, we vanished y, x goes to zero, numerically. We test this, that's how the function becomes looking, <coughs> my g function, if I take y0 across it. And what happens? All well, happens is that we have constant 0 in your numerator, right? That's why this value is 0. Horizontal approach delivers 0 value. What about bisectorial approach? That's how I can test bisectorial approach. Again, I just avoided using 1 on n. That's acceptable. On that slide, I gave you a little bit more detailed exposition here, I, I'm giving you, the, I, I'm giving you the more expressed way to present things, but still it's a complete self-sufficient way to present things. And when you do your presentations, just try to do something similar. Don't skip steps. Don't fall into these two extremes. One extreme is that when you say too much, and one extreme when you say not enough. This finding this perfect middle point, that's a skill. That's a skill which we try to foster, and hopefully by the end of it, some of it will transfer across the that side. Uh, right, so if I try bisectorial, again, if I compute my function on bisectorial direction, that's how my function look, and this is no longer zero. 
It's some number, some strange number, but it's not zero. 